Hello again, Year 3. This is Maths Lesson, Week 2, Lesson 4. And we're going to start off, as usual, with our hit the button, get your group ready, and today you're going to be multiplying by 3. So go to the website, times tables, multiply by 3, and off you go. Talking of times tables, have you had a go at the times table rock stars yet that we've signed you all up to? I've had a go and it looks really good fun and it should get you really, really quick at your recall. Give it a go. Now I know that a lot of you love your music in year three, especially little Rohan. So I found a fun video that you might recognise a tune from and it will help you to practice your three times table. Have a look, give it a go if you like, but don't worry if you don't fancy it. I've put the link in the Google Drive folder. Go something like this. Today we're thinking mainly about fractions. The objective is to be able to order fractions from smallest to largest and largest to smallest. I know that some of you found fractions a little tricky last week. So have a look in the Google folder. I have put some little revision PowerPoints in there for you. And if the work I set for you today is a bit tricky, there's always some easier stuff in the pack for you to have a look at. So what is a fraction? Well, a fraction is part of a whole number. I'm sure you recognise this as a half, a quarter, and we write a third like so. A top number is the numerator and the bottom number is the denominator. I do find that word hard to say. <laughs> I'm sure you recognise this as one half. But what does this fraction actually mean? It means it, the shape has been cut into two pieces and one half has been coloured in. Look, they're both the same size. They have to be the same size to be proper halves. What's this fraction then? Hopefully you said it was one quarter. So you've got your shape. It's been cut into four equal pieces, but only one of the quarters is yellow. Here, we've got one third. This is telling us how many pieces the shape has been cut into. And this is telling us how many have been colored in. One third. One third look is made up of one, two, three thirds. The top number in a fraction isn't always one. So what do you think this fraction is? This is telling us it's quarters. This is telling us three quarters. What about this one? Two quarters. Do you recognise this one as two thirds? Look, two of the three pieces are orange, so two thirds are orange. So if you've got a half and a half, you've got two halves like this. And wherever you've got the top number, the same as the bottom number, it makes your whole shape. Same for third C. If you've got one third, add one third, that's two thirds, three thirds. And remember, when the numerator is the same as the denominator, you make a whole shape. It's exactly the same for any fraction. Look, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters makes your whole shape. Four quarters. Now let's think about fifths and we'll do it the other way round. How many fifths do you think it takes to make a whole circle? I've put the apple there to hide the answer. Hopefully you said five. One, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths makes the whole. Let's take a look at a number line now. If this is zero and that's one, what's right in the middle? What fraction would that be labelled as? Hopefully you can see it's 
halfway between 0 and 1. So let's count along now in halves. It's 0, a half, 1, 1 and a half. 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4, 4 and a half, 5, and so on. What about quarters? If this is 0 and this is 1, we can count along in quarters again. This would be 1 quarter, 2 quarters, 3 quarters, 1. But if we add another quarter, it's 1 and a quarter. One and two quarters, one and three quarters, and then two. And we can do it with the shapes as well. So it's one quarter, two quarters, which looks like that. If you have three quarters, one quarter, two quarter, three quarters, it looks like that. Finally, if we add the fourth quarter, you've got the whole, because your numerator and denominator are the same. Do you remember that one quarter and one quarter make two quarters? But look, it's the same as a half. Can you see that all the same? Basically, if your top number is half of your bottom number, then you've got half of the circle. Look. Those two fractions are the same, they're equivalent. So 4 eighths is really a half because 4 is half of 8. 5 tenths is a half because 5 is half of 10. And 6 twelfths is a half because 6 is half of 12. Right, let's get ordering these fractions from smallest to largest. Which one do you think would come first, because it's the smallest? Which one was the biggest? And which one goes in the middle? This is what you should have said. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Now that was an easy one, because they've all got four at the bottom. They're all quarters. Let me show you the circles. There you go. Just to prove it, one quarter is the smallest, then two quarters of the circle, then three quarters. Let's look at these fractions a little bit more closely now. If you remember, two quarters was the same as a half. So do you agree that three quarters is bigger than a half? Then we can record it like this. Three quarters, and there's your greater than sign. Three quarters is greater than a half. Now can you order these from smallest to largest? Think what the fractions mean. So one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths. Quite easy because they're all fifths. You've just got to put the top number in order. Let's move it on a step here for a bit of extension work. How can we order these three numbers? These two are easy because they're both sixths. But this is going to make it harder, look, because it's one-half. The bottom number is different. These two are easy to order because one six has got to be smaller than five six, hasn't it? You can see that here. If that was pizza, I'd definitely much rather have five six of the pizza than just a six of the pizza. Where on earth is that half going to go though when we're ordering these fractions? Do you remember how many six made a half? It was three six, wasn't it? I find my times tables come in handy here. To change that two at the bottom into a six, what do you have to multiply it by? You multiplied it by three, didn't you? So you've got to do the same with the number at the top. So one times three is three, which is why a half is the same as three six. So that's how we order it from smallest to largest. Because remember that one half was really three six and you'd go one six three six five six complicated I know so don't worry if you're feeling a little bit mixed up at the moment we'll do more
There is a video in the Google Emergency folder showing you a little bit more about these equivalent fractions if you'd like to take a look. Okay, time for you to have a go. It's up to you which level of work you want to choose. This is a slightly easier one and it's in your pack. It's called Fractions Made Easier and there should be one, two, three parts. You can also have a go at this page which is in your pack page 54 and page 55. When you're happy, have a look at Year 3, Textbook 3 and think about chocolate. Have a look at this page, page 10, and you're ordering your fractions. You can write your answers on some squared paper, please. Let's see if we can all have a go at that page. And then if you like, a little bit harder, page 11. And finally, extension work on page 12. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to have to go and eat some chocolate now. <laughs> Take care, boys. See you tomorrow.